has without a doubt become much safer. This is important to comprehend since Ghana is on the cusp of attaining unprecedented wealth. This is one of the main reasons the government along with law enforcement have been stern in ensuring law and order is maintained. On this Info Hub in-depth, we look at the strides made in the security sector and how technology has improved crime fighting. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas, to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways, and lush and enriching rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. The narrative that crime in Guyana is on the increase is almost mythical. However, knowing the facts is important and numbers do not lie. As a matter of fact, the half-year statistics indicate a 3.2% decrease in serious crime. Nevertheless, the coalition government understands that one crime committed is one crime too much. Added to that, the safety of citizens has always been a priority. Last July, the government, in collaboration with China, launched a pilot safe city system in Georgetown. This system has strategically placed scores of eyes across the city in the form of intelligence surveillance cameras. The safe city system is a component of the $66.8 billion national broadband project. Now, with eyes on the city, there is no place for criminals to hide and citizens can feel safer. Minister of Public Security, the Honorable Kemraj Ramjitan, said the safe city system is what Guyana needs to effectively tackle crime. Already, they have been used to apprehend several perpetrators of crimes. This is just going to be one of the best development for our country in relation to matters security and to see the capacities and the capabilities being built in to ensure that we can literally track vehicles, track suspects to the extent of knowing where they are, at what time they would have been there through this technology. I am just so thrilled. Minister Ramjatan is of the opinion that it is going to enhance the capacity of the Guyana police force to better handle crime. Uh, indeed. This is going to take us places. We knew that it is a combination of personnel and technology that's going to take us places. We have been doing a lot of training in relation to personnel. But now the technologies are here. The technology being used is so high-tech that it is able to perform face and license plate recognition. Several police vehicles are also equipped with cameras and radios that can be traced at any time. This can afford the Guyana police force to respond to emergency at a faster rate. The Chinese ambassador to Guyana said that security is paramount. Minister of Public Telecommunications, the Honorable Catherine Hughes, noted that the advent of such technology signals exciting times for Guyana's security sector. The government, she said, is committed to using technology to transform Guyana. She is positive that a safe city component will ensure that there are prompt and efficient public security services. Very soon, the safe city system will be rolled out countrywide. While the command center for the Guyana Police Force will be completed shortly, they have full access to the use of the current system. With the introduction of DNA testing, Guyana's ability to solve criminal cases has increased significantly. Guyana's security sector is now equipped to conduct human identification using the technology. The DNA analysis equipment was commissioned at the Ghana Forensic Science Laboratory. Through support from the Inter-American Development Bank, the Forensic Lab now offers tests in DNA direct comparison or matching evidence to criminal suspects, paternity and family mapping. Testing samples include semen, hair with root, blood, and touch DNA. The equipment can run eight samples at once in less than two hours, allowing for a fast turnaround and improved 
investigation rate and closure in matters requiring DNA analysis. Two staff members of the GFSL have already been trained in DNA analysis. Minister Ramjitan said this period in Guyana's history will be remarkable for its movement away from the simple methods in scientific detection. He said DNA remains a valuable crime-fighting tool. DNA testing is needed in Guyana because it serves as that investigative tool, as I just mentioned. And of course, they identify the perpetrator. It will also resolve a number of those cases that have since now been unresolved. And cases of those nature would include murder, rape, and body parts found that have been kept. The minister said the security sector has been faced with financial challenges, sending samples overseas for testing. Time has also been a challenge for the sector. However, with the new equipment, all that is now a thing of the past. With this new equipment, both the time and cost will be reduced significantly. I understand that the time will be far less than half and uh, it will cost in the vicinity of about $60,000. Now that is a dramatic decline from $1.5 million per test. Another equipment, the scanning electron microscope, also called Phenom XL or Phenom GSR, was introduced to Ghana for the first time. This will be used for gunshot residue testing. The equipment can also do testing on glass, paint and other elements through comparative analysis on evidence collected from crime scenes that are non-DNA in nature. The equipment can identify and confirm the presence of GSR particles and can compare structure in evidential specimens. Together, the two equipment cost $97 million. Director of the Guiana Forensic Lab, Delon France, said with such advancements, criminal and forensic investigation has moved up another level and will bring adjudication to more criminal cases over time. Our main focus is on quality forensic service, and we are currently working towards international accreditation with the aim to make our service more marketable, to initiate activities under one of our core function and objective, which is to make the organization financially viable. As the only forensic laboratory in Guyana, we will continue to advance our skills and technology to meet the growing and diverse, meet the growing needs of the diverse criminal enterprise, not only <coughs> nationally, but internationally as we collaborate on the various treaties and agreements to combat national and international crimes. Commissioned back in 2014, the Forensic Science Laboratory was fitted with four analytical departments, the Toxicology, Documents Trace Evidence, Chemistry and Non-Analytical Departments. However, it was until February 2017 that the testing of samples from law enforcement agencies began. Ghana has taken every step necessary to eradicate the heinous crime. Those steps have earned Ghana Tier 1 status. Earlier this year, the Ministerial Task Force on Trafficking in Persons launched its 2019-2020 action plan to further combat the crime. The plan is building on the significant results yielded from the 2017-2018 action plan. That we have managed to investigate and prosecute. 17 individuals were charged. We had three convictions for trafficking in persons, and we had another three convicted for other crimes arising from trafficking in persons investigations. The minister said despite the challenges, the government is fighting against this form of modern-day slavery. I am hoping that this year and this following plan, 2019-2020, that we are going to have more investigations, more charges, and more convictions. One of the reasons identified for the success of the plan of action is collaboration between local and international agencies. We cannot win the battle alone at a law enforcement agency. It's never going to be won. There are going to be limitations in relation to law enforcement. But when we can have a variety of individual agencies locally and internationally, we think, of course, success will be at hand. The efforts by law enforcement following the recent action plan accounted for eight tip convictions, almost tripling what was achieved last year. The Guyana Police Force this year investigated 18 suspected cases of tip, which involved 138 alleged victims and 50 suspects. Minister Ramjitan said all of the alleged victims were females, with 150 being under the age of 30 and 7 under the age of 18. 87% of the alleged victims were located in Region 4. 
Venezuelans accounted for 84% of the alleged victims, while 11 were Guyanese and 4 from the Dominican Republic. Sexual exploitation was the primary reason behind those cases, but Minister Ramjatan believes there was more going on. Sexual exploitation was the primary reason behind those cases, but Minister Ramjatan believes there was more going on. Not because I believe that it is sexual exploitation as the primary purpose that we are finding, I believe that there are other and that a very important one that come under the category of labor exploitation. I believe that there might be a number of our Amerindian girls who are being called out from the interland to come to work for people in Georgetown and other places who are being hugely exploited. Guyana and Belize are the only countries in the region with Tier 1 status, which is undeniably impressive, but it gets better. Guyana intensified its fight against trafficking in persons with the launch of standard operating procedures for investigating and prosecution of trafficking in person cases in Guyana. This is a collaborative effort among the International Organization for Migration and the governments of Guyana and the United States of America. Minister Ramjatan said that the SOPs are part of a greater effort to ensure that the rights of the victims are protected. He stressed that with wealth, Guyana is going to become a magnet for such crimes, adding that it is important for all stakeholders to be singing from the same hymn book. And my fear is that if we do not set up the preparatory work to ensure that we are smarter to know how to deal with them, how to identify them, how to interview them, how to prosecute them, we are not going to be that successful, notwithstanding that we're going to have lots of money and so on. They might be the ones who could then take away our territory, as it were. Regional Coordinating Officer for the Caribbean and Chief of Mission for IOM, Robert Natiello, said the SOPs marked the beginning of hard work for the stakeholders. He urged them to quickly become familiar with the document. That the success or the failure of a case can hinge on, a myri on myriad issues, such as deficiencies in evidence collection, Perhaps the tone of an interview can affect how information is gathered or not. Uh, or the collaboration between, between a victim advocate and a prosecutor. So with these issues in view, the importance of following the procedures as closely as practicable cannot be overstated. Attorney at Law and Legal Consultant Diana Shaw said other Caribbean countries are looking to Guyana as an example since it holds a Tier 1 status on trafficking in persons. We want to ensure that from the very beginning, the persons who are contacting and who are having that first contact with victims are aware of the need to protect the rights of victims, that they are working with victims in a manner that ensures their trust, that respects their rights, and also supports their rehabilitation and recovery. Acting Chief Justice Roxanne George said the launch of the SOPs is evidence of Guyana's commitment to tackling trafficking in persons in a comprehensive manner. She noted that they will be used in the courts so that magistrates and judges are better equipped. Back in June, the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit, Canu, was given a spanking new headquarters which cost $42 million. With that, Minister Ramjitan called for more successful prosecutions. Minister Ramjitan said that the government is committed to providing the unit with the resources it needs to effectively carry out its work. However, with more resources, there must be more prosecutions. But we have to realize that it is important that our monies be spent on personnel and infrastructure and all the other things to get the big gunners targeted and prosecuted successfully. But those are the ones that we are after. Cutting the profit of those in the drug trade, according to Minister Ramjitan, will drive a knife through the heart of the trade. This drug traffic trade has as its primary motivation profit. All the literature that I have read have indicated that that is where it is. And if we can do the necessary things to cut the profit out of the trade, catching them, destroying the cultivation fields, eradicating where they're planting the marijuana, all those kinds of things, will then break it down. Deputy Head of Kanu, Leslie Ramlal, said that a new building is critical to the works of Kanu. Ramlal pointed out that the aim is to end Guyana's stigma of being a transshipment country for narcotics. Our aim at Kano is to ensure by 2022, and that's the timeline I've given myself, to ensure that Guyana's stigma of being a transshipment country for narcotics is removed. And so in the last two years, our position and our aggressiveness 
is testimony. Additionally, it is without a doubt that the Ghana police force is more robust. With that, the security sector has become more decentralized following the placement of a police commander in each region. Unlike the past, where one commander was in charge of as much as three regions, commanders will now be more hands-on in a specific region. This means better enforcement and maintaining of law and order. Aside from feeling safe from the criminals, citizens are also given justice against police officers who act above the law. Minister Ramjitan has made it crystal clear that every complaint made against officers of the force will be investigated. Over the last four years, 40 rogue and unprofessional policemen were charged and their services terminated. Every complaint, whether it comes from quarters that are more regular, that is written statements about certain policemen dealing um, with criminal activities, we investigate and we have caught some policemen. And so we don't have a perfect police force. And yes, of course, I rather suspect that things might be going on. Commissioner of Police Leslie James also called on ranks to desist from such actions and conduct their jobs in a professional manner. He stressed that police receive training upon entering the force and this continues even after deployment to various divisions. When policemen are engaged with certain acts, in most of the cases, it might have been a decision they themselves would have made, not necessarily due to lack of training. I wish to make that very clear. I want to take the opportunity to say too, and to remind ranks in the force to desist from such acts. It makes no sense because when it comes to our attention, we will investigate. If it has to result with charges, that will be done. The Ghana Police Force also launched its Police Records Management Information System this year. The new program will ensure efficient record keeping and guaranteed data, including information on criminals, is readily available to investigators. Premise is a regional project under Carry Secure, an initiative of the United Nations Development Program. Carry Secure is a regional project which seeks to strengthen evidence based decision making for citizens in the region. Minister Ramjitan lauded the program and acknowledged that it will positively impact the GPF. It is an evidence based approach that will vastly help regional and national institutions in that regard. So, literally, in every regard, this, what we are talking about here today, is vital in the fight against violence and crime. The main goal is to decrease incidents of youth crime and violence through effective data-driven policy making and programming in the Eastern and Southern Caribbean. That since 2016, we, we have had endorsed the United Nations Development Program, which was entitled Strengthening Evidence-Based Decision Making for citizen security in the Caribbean. And Guyana is not the only country, I understand. There are nine other countries which are involved in this security data development. I, I remember in 2017, too, we appointed a National Carry Secure Task Force for the implementation of this data-driven process and policy. Premise will be implemented for a six-month trial period at Albertong and Fort Wellington police stations before being implemented at other police stations across the country. To top things off, Deputy Chief of Mission of the U.S. Government Mark Cullinan said as criminals become savvier with the growing use of information technology, so must law enforcement. It is therefore important and imperative that law enforcement officials also make clever use of technology to optimize their work in stopping the illegal activities that cost this country and others in the region and its people so much. The U.S. government is therefore very pleased to partner with the government of Guyana on the Carry Secure project implemented by the United Nations Development Program. This has been Info Hub In Depth. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.